Unix is important. How important? Very. It's pretty much responsible for computers as we know them today. Your PS5, yeah, inspired by Unix. Your Android phone, your iPhone, both inspired by Unix. Even the firmware on your home router is ultimately influenced by Unix. It's kind of like the grandparent of all modern-day OSs, an OS being an operating system. And an operating system is the middleman between the physical hardware you can touch and the digital software that you use. It's the backbone of your computing needs. And in this regard, it's really hard to fully appreciate just how important Unix is. But I want to do it right. So what we're going to do is go way back to the very beginning, the 1960s, an ancient time when punch cards were still being used for computing. Disco wasn't even a thing yet. And actually, Unix wasn't even a thing yet. Uh, initially, um, we're going to start with with something called Multix, which was a failed attempt at an operating system. And the only reason why I'm talking about it is because it created an important spark. Because a guy who worked on the project, a guy named Kent Thompson, he would go on to create a phoenix out of the ashes of Multix. In 1970, he put together a team to make a new operating system. And this is, that they basically wanted to get rid of all the complications of Multix and, and make it work right. They called this new operating system Unix. That's Unix with a C, not an X. It was changed to an X later. But one of the reasons they called it Unix is because there was a joke that it was a castrated version of the Multix operating system. So it's a, a, a reference to a eunuch, like the one from Game of Thrones we all know and love. Uh, okay, so a few years after they make eunuchs with a C, um, you know, they're making the developments with it. They're making new versions. They're updating it. But it was the fourth version where everything changed. One of the programmers on the project, a guy named Dennis Ritchie, he created the C programming language. It's insane when you think about it. That the, the language, I mean, I can make a whole video on the C programming language, but anyway, he made it for version 4, and it changed everything, because from that point on, Unix could be ported to a variety of different systems and hardware. So it's basically a, a genie taken out of a bottle that could not be put back. And this this tree you're looking at right here is the result. We have a um, complicated hierarchy of operating system versions all relating back to that initial Unix release. So you can see right here, this is where C was implemented. And there were some major branches that started to form. You have the BSD branch, which is what they worked on over at UC Berkeley. And if you follow that down, you have Next Step. And ultimately, you have what? Yeah, Mac OS X. So Mac is actually a derivative of Unix. So... You might be using a Mac right now, not even knowing that you're kind of using Unix. And back to the tree, on the other side of it, we have another major branch that is known as System 5. And you have popular operating systems like SunOS and Solaris. Um, and even Microsoft has an entry on this tree with Xenix. But, as you know, they went on to ultimately create an entirely separate tree of their own starting with MS-DOS. Yeah, you might have heard of it, uh, something called Windows. I just want to be clear that Windows is not related to the original Unix, even though Microsoft has uh, a Unix version on this tree. Uh, Windows is structured very differently. It is not, quote-unquote, Unix-like. An operating system that is Unix-like is Linux. And I should have started this video talking about how Unix is not Linux, I'm talking about Unix. I mean, is there enough X's? You literally have Unix in the word Linux. But, um, yeah, Linux is not Unix. And actually, a core part of Linux is GNU, or GNU. And that literally stands for GNU is not Unix. So, Linux is not Unix, but it is Unix-like. And basically what that means is it's not a direct descendant of the original Unix 
but it embodies the same feel. With all that said, it's, it, it was an obviously inspired by the behemoth that is Unix. Um, it's kind of like Windows. Now, while Windows is not Unix-like, um, well, we can't imagine a world where a Windows operating system arises without Unix first existing. It, it, Windows was in some way inspired by Unix. It, you, you, it could not be. Um, and even if it wasn't, Unix is important in a whole other regard because it was a sandbox for programmers in the 80s and 90s to use to work on what would eventually become the Internet. So this very video that you're watching is ultimately possible because of the innovations of Unix. And I made this video because I wanted to pay some respect to this important operating system. Even if you've never used Unix, I'm sure you haven't. But the computers that you use wouldn't be possible without it. So just wanted to pay some respect, like I said. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you keep learning. Have a good one.